everybody, Kathy and Annette here. We're going to tackle this Hello. tub. Hopefully you saw the pictures that we posted a little bit early, earlier. This is a 1917, the date's on the bottom of the tub. Of course you can see we've got it turned upside down. But this is a 1970, 17, 17, sorry. Cloth foot tub. Cloth foot porcelain tub and it's a four foot tub. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to take to Albuquerque, New Mexico with yes. us. For finish market, market days. days. So um, we're going to start by showing you guys how to do this. So the first step that we're going to take is we're, we are actually going to go ahead and seal all of this. Well, we're going to start scraping off the rust. Yes. So we're going to take off the rust as much as we can, and then we're going to seal it with liquid wax just to give it, just to lock in that rust even outside of the new surface that we're going to take the next step. But anything loose you've got on the outside, you want to try to get that off. Yeah, we're just working on getting all this corrosion off that it has and giving it a nice smooth surface to paint on. So you don't want that flaky stuff coming off on your paint. Um, so you could use a sander on this if you wanted to, which would be really nice. I've got a wet towel that I'm going to go back over this as we get things off. So you could use a sander or these little jobbers from your kitchen. Grab those at Walmart or someplace. And we don't have to get it all off. We just have to get off the loose particles. So you wouldn't have to strip it all the way down to nothing. Just get off all these little loose particles. You can probably see it coming off here. And you want to do the same thing to the feet. Or like if you're painting your patio furniture, you to your chairs, you know, anything that's loose, you just want to knock it off. All right, so we're going to continue to work on this, and then we're going to come back in just a little bit and show you step two. So step one, obviously, is going to be to remove all of the loose particles. Take a um, brush, brush all those away. A wet bath would be perfect right now to go over and get off all those um, loose particles that are falling down here. And um, so we're going to come back and show you step two, but this would be your step one. See you in a bit. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and we're back. Uh, we wanted to kind of talk about what we're going to use today. We're using, of course, our new surface, which is like a primer. The best way to describe it, it's, it's just like a primer. It gives your paint something to hang on to. So if you've got a real slick surface, which we don't have a slick surface here, uh, but if you've got a real slick surface, you want to use this new surface. We're actually going to use that on the inside of the tub, but we're also going to use it on the outside as well, okay? Then we have Jewel that we're going to use as a base coat for mm -hmm. our peacock, like Annette told you a little bit earlier. That's going to make our metallic go a lot farther because we're going to be painting, instead of painting over a white, we're going to be painting over this Jewel. And then we've chosen bronze for the outside of the tub, and I just wanted to talk about why we chose that. This tub is covered in rust and dark spots. And um, chances are, I mean, we're gonna paint this with our liquid wax, which is really gonna help seal it. Uh, but there is still a chance that there could be some uh, rust that's gonna try to work its way back through, because it's a, usually an active um, organism, I guess you'd say, mm -hmm. that wants to just continue to eat its way through whatever it's right. trying well, to do. Well, especially way when you get a water-based product, because it's water, yeah. makes the rust tend to want to spread. There you go. So we're going to go over this with liquid wax to help seal it. Then we're going to do a coat of new surface, and then we can start with our paint. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you how to just, we've got our liquid wax gloss here, and we're just going to start applying a liberal coat on here. And one thing, too, if you... You know, if you're worried about brush strokes and things like that, you can also apply with the rag, um, which is the rag on effect. Uh, let me find my rag. I, I just have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, then that way, I mean, even though generally I would say if you're painting something black, something brown, something dark, you'd want to use like a darker colored rag. That way you don't have any fibers that could transfer over to your um, liquid wax. Um, but also if you're doing something that is light colored, then of course use a white or a gray sock. 
um, or a rack, either or. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the differences between applying with a brush and applying with a rack. So you go into your wax with a damp cloth, not a wet cloth, but a damp cloth, and then you just rub it on. And so what this is going to do is this will may eliminate those brush strokes that you may see um, sometimes with the application of the brush. But the brush is nice to get it on there and, and apply it in all those places, especially in areas that you can't really get down inside of. I'm going to move our product off of here so we can mm -hmm. get the bottom. And now we're already started working on some of the legs to the toe. The other thing, apologize for moving back and forth in front of the camera. Um, the other thing too is something that I do recommend in your liquid wax is a synthetic brush. Our nice um, Restore Synthetic Brushes, they're super fine, so it makes it go on really smooth. That's one thing the retailers learned um, at a class that we had not long ago, is that this works fantastic with your liquid wax. So okay. I'm going to show you how that works also, and again, eliminating those brush strokes that we don't like to see. And I'll just show you up here. See how nice and smooth that's going on? So yeah, especially when you're working on, like she said, a smooth surface like a dining room table, a piece of furniture, coffee table, kitchen cabinets, anything like that, especially that you're using your liquid wax on, um, you want to use that synthetic brush or rag it on. And another tip on liquid wax is to realize that when you're um, painting with a brush or, and, and or even just applying it, you're going to see it go on. When In the container, it's a milky white. And then from the container, once you apply it to your piece, it looks clear, but then it starts turning blue. Um, that's okay. A lot of people call me and go, I don't know what's going on. It's, it's turning blue. What's, what's wrong? Yes, and I'm like, that's actually good. That's <laughs> activating. So that piece, that, that liquid wax is activating. So at that point, you really don't want to go back over it. You want to just let it set and, and, and start to dry. The other nice thing with that rag is if you get any like puddles and things, you can just kind of soak them up. And that way, you don't have the, the yellowing that people get a lot of times. Um, if you do get that, generally it's because it's too thick or it's puddled in an area. So I'm just going to get that off there. So because it's a water-based product, water doesn't bother it. The other thing too is on the feet, um, as you can see, this would be the original foot. Um, it's kind of dull, flat, and then this would be a one that had um, liquid wax ragged on. So the other thing too is you're not going to have puddling inside like these talons or the claws that are on the claw foot, um, rather than it just goes on a nice, smooth, slick surface. I'm trying to show it in the light so you can see what the difference is. So. So that's We're it. going to let this dry, usually 45 minutes um, to an hour sometimes, uh, depending on what you're painting. And this um, is really porous, so mm -hmm. that liquid wax is going to be in all those little divots and cracks. So like she said, yeah. probably going to let it dry at least 45 yeah, minutes. at least. So we'll be back. All right, we're, we're back. Okay. This has taken a lot longer to dry than we kind of anticipated. We thought about 45 minutes really took, and I'm sure it's because of all, like we talked about, all the little puddling areas and stuff. It really took about an hour at least for it to dry completely. So now we're back, and we've decided that since we have all of, we've got this dark color, and the easiest way for us to paint this tub and to get a nice look, we've chosen bronze. In the end, we were going to do spun gold, and then we just looked at it and decided that we would be better off with bronze. And we think that bronze is going to be really pretty with the peacock, especially for more like southwest type colors. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use, I'm going to use the signature series brush, and Annette's going to use the synthetic. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to start sh showing you how to apply this. We've, of course, in our earlier, we scrubbed it all down, and then we put our liquid wax on it, liquid wax is dry, and now we're ready to paint. Yep. We could do a coat of new surface if we wanted to, but we just don't feel like it's necessary because this is so porous. We're pretty confident that this, um, our bronze plaster paint is gonna stick really well. So, right? Yep. Okay, so here we go. 
bronze paint there for me and some for Annette. I'm going to load my Signature Series brush up. And the same with the Signature brush, or the, um, sorry, the Synthetic brush. So you'll see that you will load it up and then apply on the piece of your paint. All right. And then you're going long way, so I'll make it this way. Oh, doesn't matter to me. Neither. And once we get this all painted, we're going to uh, come back and seal it with a uh, coat of our liquid wax uh, gloss. As you can see, it's pretty easy to paint. I am going to paint up underneath the slip. You might not normally need to do that if it's going to be something that's actually going to be in your home. But for us, we're going to have this um, kind of up. Uh, off the floor for customers to see it real well. So we want to make sure we get this lip painted on here also. If you haven't used a signature series brush or the synthetic brushes, you should give them a try. You're going to love them. I love the amount of paint and coverage that I can get with the signature series and Annette loves the synthetic because you get such a smooth, smooth finish with those. Okay, so we're going to continue to paint on this. We're not adding any water as you can see. Typically when I'm painting with um, regular plaster paint, we always start with a damp brush and we sometimes dip our brush in water as we go. But with the metallics, there's really not a reason to do that. Uh, they stay pretty supple and move really well. So um, we're not using any water with our metallics. And then we're going to be back in a bit. Okay, and we're back. As you can see, we've got our coat of uh, bronze, which just looks like copper tab. We love it. Gorgeous. Now we painted our feet using the jewel. Remember we told you if you use jewel as your base coat, it won't take as much of your metallic. It's a perfect accompaniment to your jewel uh, for your peacock. So she painted them in, in jewel and now we're going over the top with peacock. And that peacock is a beautiful metallic. It's going to be gorgeous with this tub. We just wanted to show this to you really quick how nice that makes it and makes your peacock go so much farther. As you know, metallics are more expensive than regular plaster paint, so that will really help you to put that base coat of your uh, sister color of whichever um, plaster paint color goes closest to your metallic that you're using. So we're going to be back in a bit. We're going to have the guys turn this tub over, and we're going to come back with the legs on the tub and it turned right side up. Then we're going to start working on the inside of the tub. That's where we're going to use our new surface and again our jewel and our peacock on the inside of the tub. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, and we're back. And we're ready to do the inside of the tub now. We had a lot of fun with the outside. We're actually thinking we're probably going to put a stencil on that. I can't wait to show it to you guys how it turned out. Um, Okay, so this we're definitely going to need new surface for because this tub is slick and cold. Um, anytime you've got something that's really slick and cold, the paint wants to beat up on it. It's not going to want to hang on. So that's when your new surface is going to come in handy. We didn't really need it for the outside of the tub because it was real porous and rough. So, but for this inside, we definitely do. And all we're going to do is just start by applying a coat. It doesn't have to be a thick coat. What we want to do is just give the paint something to hang on to. We also want to paint this chrome faucet. So same thing with it. We're going to apply a coat of new surface to our chrome faucet. And you're just literally just going to paint it on there. You don't have to be careful. Just want to paint it on. Just don't get too much. You don't want it globbed on. You don't want it running all over the place. Again, 
this just creates it's a it's a really wonderful product we created this product um, in January I believe it was um, and we're real excited with it we rolled it out in January and super simple it's water-based like all of our products are we try to keep everything non-toxic water-based as much as we possibly can so when you're painting in those closed you know your rooms are closed and there's not much air ventilation you don't want a lot of toxic fumes going new surface does have a little bit of an odor but it's not too bad but if you're real sensitive to odors I would say, uh, again, keep a fan running, have a window open if you can. I know most of you are looking at what we're doing today because you want to actually use this at home on your own bathtubs. So the trick to all of this is, of course, to let this product harden. You're going to want it to harden for minimum three days, but really a week is best. Just don't gouge it or scratch it for the first week. Maximum hardening is usually about 30 days out. So for the first month, you really want to be careful that you don't get scratches on it. And after that, it should last you a very long time. You don't want to use um, harsh cleaners. Once you've painted your tub, you want to always use something maybe like scrubbing bubbles, any kind of a non-abrasive natural cleaner that doesn't have a lot of ammonias or bleaches in it so it is still a painted surface you do still have to take care of it like a painted surface so those are some tips uh, probably i'm going to say in about a year uh, and i'm saying that because i've painted my countertops at home in my bathroom in about a year if this starts dulling down and you notice that your finish is starting to get thin or starting to come off it's just as simple as going back and applying another couple of coats of liquid wax to reseal your tub and any painted surface is not a permanent forever surface but this could last you for years and years especially if you do reseal you know once a year or so okay so we're going to pause right there. We're going to come back. We're going to continue painting. We're going to come back and show you this. Um, when we get the new surface on, it's going to need to dry for about 20 minutes. It's pretty warm in here today, so I think we'll be good with about 20 minute dry time. Then we'll be ready to start applying our color. And then, our, of course, our last steps are going to be to seal it with our liquid wax. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. No? <laughs> All right, so we'll be back in a bit. Okay, and we're back again. We let our new surface dry. We applied a light coat of new surface to the faucet and the tub. Now we're applying a coat of Jewel, and we're going to use the Jewel as a base coat for our Peacock. And then the Peacock, as we said earlier, is a metallic. Metallics are more expensive. White is also a very hard color to cover up. White always wants to peek back out at you. Just about the time you think you've got white covered up, you'll see a line or two where it's peeking back out just because it's so bright and just kind of takes over. So um, the fact that this new surface is white, painting a coat of jewel is really going to help us out because it's going to allow us to just then just paint over jewel with our peacock and not paint over the white. Hopefully that makes sense. We're having a lot of fun with the tub. It's uh, always hard to choose colors, especially when you're going to a big show. We're trying to keep in mind with this tub that we're actually going to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we love their bright colors down there, their Navajo uh, prints and looks, and um, th th their decor is gorgeous. So we kind of want to appeal to them and um, we're looking at some different color schemes for this tub. So as you can see, the paint's just going right on. This 
is our signature color, uh, Jewel. It's one of our most popular turquoise colors. It goes great with earth tones, bronzes, blacks, just about any color you can imagine, pinks even, uh, will go with this color of turquoise. So it's not too blue, it's not too green, it's just a really great color. So if you're searching for a nice accent piece color to go in a room where you have a lot of earth tones, it goes well with red. Um, just really, like I said, just, just about any, any shade it's going to go. It's not too pastel. So once we get this coat of um, jewel on here, paint around this faucet, come back and paint that faucet bronze. Um, once we get this coat of jewel on, we're going to come back and paint our peacock, mm -hmm. which is a gorgeous metallic color. And then, of course, after that, we're going to seal it with two coats of liquid wax and let it harden and cure for at least a week, you know, three days before you even really touch it. Um, and then let it harden for up to a week. 30 days, it will be at its hardest point. So the longer you can let it sit and harden and cure out, the better off you're going to be. Now when we get things that are come from the factory, most of those have a baked on finish. And so that baking on is what hardens the paint. And that's why that's always so much harder. But you can get the same, um, you can get the same hardness with paints that you do at home if you just be real patient and let those harden out and don't apply too many coats one right over another. We wanted to paint this today and try to get it finished because it needs to set. We're going to New Mexico next week. So it needs to sit and cure out and harden for at least a week before we take it up there. Because I'm sure everybody is going to want to check the durability of it. <laughs> so, and that's being awfully quiet today. Mm -hmm. I'm just rambling on. I'm just painting on this jewel. Okay, so we're probably going to leave you for a little bit. We're going to finish this up and we'll come back when we start applying our peacock so you can see how pretty it is. And then we'll also let you see some ideas that we have for the outside of the tub that's turning out pretty awesome. So usually what we think we're going to paint something by the time we get through, it's the farthest thing from what we ended up painting it. But that's okay. That's what creating is all about. And having a good time and just creating away. I'm looking, I'm painting over here in that space instead of my own down <laughs> here. Should I have to come paint my space? All right, so we'll be back in a bit.